Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here with Geography. Now, on to Kuwait. Uh, I, I know where Kuwait is located. I know, isn't in Kuwait, didn't it, like, uh, Iraq invade Kuwait? It was, like, early 90s, something like that. You know, the Gulf War. So, uh, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, uh, other than that, I don't know a whole lot about it, and even that, it's not really knowing anything about it, you know, so uh, I'll be interested, uh, you know, kind of see what's going on with Kuwait. So anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe, and remember, I'm doing every country in the world, alphabetical order, also got some uh, war uh, uh, playlists going on, you know, some, some uh, history stuff, so definitely check that stuff out. But anyway, yeah, like, subscribe, and let's jump into it, guys. Hope you guys are having a great day. Do you? Oh, cool. He's got a cool shirt on. I need to make me some cool shirts. <laughs> All right. Come on, screen. Load. Load. All right. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. Hey, welcome back to a brand new episode of Geography Now. Thanks for your patience. I know you've been kuwaiting. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbs. Yeah, we got a whole new set of intros, outros, and transition slides. <laughs> Ken made them. Follow him on Instagram, give him a round of applause. Now, when we cover Arab countries, I try really hard to explain how each of them is unique and distinguishable from the others. I mean, clearly a Yemeni will be pretty different from a Lebanese person. So what makes Kuwait stick out? Well, let's find out by starting out with another cool transition slide. Oh, cool. When was the last time we were in the Gulf? Was it Bahrain? Or, no, no, it was uh, Iran. No, it was Iraq. Iraq. Yes. yes, Iraq. Yeah. Yeah, this place has a lot of interesting people surrounding it. First of all, Kuwait is located on the northeastern corner of the Arabian Peninsula at the tip of the Persian Gulf, bordered by Saudi Arabia and Iraq. <gasps> you called it Persian? We've been over this like four times. I'm not doing it again. The country owns nine <laughs> main islands, the largest being Bubayan, right at the border with Iraq, on the Qasr Azubayr waterway. The capital is Kuwait City, located on the bay, whereas the country is divided into six governorates. The country is currently almost complete with finishing the Sheikh Jabr Al Ahmad Al Sabah Causeway, which is set to cross the bay, connecting the main city, Kuwait City, to the northern part, effectively wow. cutting traffic in half. The largest city is, of course, Kuwait City, which also holds the country's one and only wow. international airport, Kuwait International, whereas the other- Hold on a second, I, I gotta see that city. Hold on. Wait, bay connecting the main it. city, Kuwait Just City, saying. to the northern part, effectively cutting traffic in half. The largest city is, of course, Kuwait City, which also- Wow. That looks, oops, sorry. That looks cool. Uh, like, really, what are these, like, like, global things here? This is cool. Look at that, man. That is a cool looking city. It's like, I don't know, man. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Holds the country's one and only international airport, Kuwait International, whereas the other airports are just for military use, like the U.S. military base Camp Buring. The largest cities outside of Kuwait City's metropolitan area would be Abdali in the north and Al Wafra in the south. However, the country is hoping that a ton of people will move into the Sabah Al Ahmad Sea City after completion, known for being the opposite and more eco friendly version of Dubai's Palm City because it's like. Hey, Emirates, what are you doing? Yeah, what's up? Um, I'm just uh, making artificial islands. How does that work? Well, see, I siphon the land up from the bottom of the sea, up, and then voila, a new island appears. Hmm. Well, wouldn't that, like, actually destroy most of the coral reefs and kill all the fish? <laughs> what, you got, like, a better idea on how to make well, islands? Well, actually, I do. You see, in Kuwait, we just build artificial waterways and let the sea naturally funnel through them through tidal gates. That way, we don't destroy the ecosystem. Uh, okay, here's, oh, like, wow. 50 dirham. Just, just shut up. Okay, just shut up. <laughs> That's cute. My currency is way higher in value than yours. Oh, you... Otherwise, some places of interest might include places like the Old Souk, Avenues Mall, Aqua Park, the Scientific Museum, Jabir Al Ahmad Cultural Center, Whoa. Al Mubarakia, Kuwait Towers, 360 Mall, the Mirror House, Jabir Al Ahmad Stadium, Al Shahid Park, Al Hamra Tower and Mall. One another weird so cool. but kind of cool thing that maybe you can check out. If you go to the northern border with Iraq, you can see all the residue from the Gulf War times with destroyed oil fields that have solidified into tar. And near the south, you can see a ton of industrial pipelines and refinery buildings. That's where Kuwait's little secret lies. Perfect opportunity for us to jump into the next part, shall we? 
For those of you that know at least a little bit about Kuwait, images of the burning oil fields from the 90s Gulf War are probably what get conjured up when you hear the word Kuwait. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, that was a thing that happened. I mean, they are the world's third largest oil producer, holding about 104 billion barrels in reserves, almost 10% of the entire wow. world's supply, mostly found in Bergen Field. But hey, there's a little bit more to Kuwait than just oil. Like what? Water. Water? Water. Now, if you watched one of our previous episodes that I loved researching so much that I literally went there because I was curious, Bahrain, you'll probably know how Kuwait, a dry, desolate desert, country with no permanent bodies of water gets its water. Rain? N no. Wells? Not really. Waterfalls? I said no permanent water bodies. Waterfalls aren't necessarily permanent. They can halt if conditions cause just a thing to occur. Okay, that's true, but... Okay, Barbs, you clearly need some help. Kuwait, like many other countries, gets hydrated primarily through desalinization plants. In fact, Kuwait was the first country in the world to introduce desalinization as a primary supplier of water to a large-scale population back in the 50s. The iconic landmarks symbolizing the nation, the Kuwait Towers, are in themselves water towers that store up water. Well, these wow. two are, but this one holds equipment and controls the power of these two, and this one also has a cafe and rotating restaurant on top in this smaller <clears throat> sphere thing. Thank you, Noah. You guys asked for more of Noah, so I gave it to you. All right, my turn. Uh, so let's cool. see, the highest point is only about 110 meters tall. There's the Bubayan Island Wetland Conservation where birds flock to. The national animal is the Golden Falcon. Uh, on all those Shamal winds from Iraq that we talked about in the Iraq episode make Kuwait generally colder than its neighbors. Seriously, sometimes you see people wearing this, which is called a bisht. This was actually sent to me in the Jamaica Flag Slash Fan Friday huh. episode in which one of you guys, an actual Kuwaiti person, Abdul Aziz, you sent it to me. I actually get to use your gift in the Kuwait episode. Isn't that cool? You rock, man. Also, he sent these uh, sandals and this fan. Speaking of which summers can be <laughs> swelteringly hot. It's not uncommon to reach over 50 degrees Celsius. It's so hot wow. that they literally had to change their national day from June 19th to February 25th to allow the people to celebrate comfortably and not die outdoors. Otherwise, outside of oil, Kuwait used to be known for having some of the most sought after pearls harvested from wild oysters. The problem was somewhere in like 1916, this happened. Ooh, I'll never lose this in history. I'm on top of the world. Wait, why don't I just cultivate these oysters and artificially graft them so that I can manufacture pearls on a large and controlled scale. Oh no, you little. And that's kind of how that ended. But yeah, again, oil. So yeah, security cushion. But anyway, enough on all that. Let's see another cool transition slide, shall we? All right. Kuwaiti. That's what you call these people, Kuwaitis. Not Kuwaitian, not Kuwaitian, Kuwaitis. not Kuwaitanese, Kuwaiti. All right, first of all, the country has about 4.2 million people and is the second richest GCC Gulf Cooperation Council country after Qatar. Remember guys, Qatar, not Qatar. Now here's where things get a little interesting. Out of all the people in Kuwait, only about 30% are actual Kuwaiti people and citizens whom identify as Arab as well. About 70% of the country is populated by non-citizen expatriates. You get a lot of wow. this type of population dynamic in the Gulf countries, don't be too shocked, wait till we get to Qatar. Out of the remaining 70% of expatriates, another 30% or so are Arabs coming from places like Iraq and Egypt, while the remainder of the population mostly comes from a slew of Asian countries, mostly Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, wow. India, even some Filipinos tagging along. The small three or so percent are made up of Africans and Europeans, again, mostly expats. They also use the Kuwaiti dinar as their currency, which as of 2018 is the highest valued currency in the world. They use the type C and G plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that don't know, an expat is like, how can I put it? It's it, it's like this. I'm rich, but I don't want to hire my own countrymen because they're all rich and won't work for me. Plus, they're kind of whiny and lazy. You know, I need a cheap but desperate workforce. I'll do it. Great, so okay, you can like legally live here for a long time, but remember, you do not actually belong here and most likely never will, okay? Okay. Whoa, you actually became a citizen. Yeah, I married a Kuwaiti and paperwork was pretty easy after that, so you know. Awesome, <laughs> you're one of us now. Welcome to the rare few. Oh, by the way, you're too expensive now, so you're fired. Keep in mind, Kuwaiti citizens do wow. work, it's just mostly high-end positions as they rarely ever find themselves in lower tier jobs that are filled by expats. Oh, and keep in mind, being a GCC citizen is like highly valued in the Arab world. But anyway, what does it mean to be a Kuwaiti and how is it different from all the other go- It's very interesting how that works, you know, the, the expats, how you know, you hire, you know, people outside the country just a lot cheaper and then they, if they do decide to become a citizen, they're just not, it's not affordable anymore. It's very interesting. 
like highly valued in the Arab world. But anyway, what does it mean to be a Kuwaiti and how is it different from all the other Gulf countries? That's a little hard to answer, but I asked you guys, the Kuwaiti subscribers, and this is what you said. For one, Kuwait is kind of a monarchy run by a crown prince, today it being this guy. However, they have a strange inheritance law in which an emir and prince kind of alternate the rule. It's hard to understand, but yeah, sometimes there can be an emir, sometimes a crown prince, whatever, hmm. Kuwait. Also, Kuwait has a lot more Shias, estimated to be anywhere as high as 40% of the population, but numbers are hard to come by. Otherwise, in addition to Bahrain, Kuwait has some of the freest religion laws in the Gulf. Christians make up about 17% of the population, mostly expats. Churches have been built, and around 400 Kuwaiti citizens in themselves are Christians. Otherwise, all other religions, mostly Hindus and Buddhists, make up the remaining 13 or so percent of expats, and they're allowed to worship freely as well. Kuwaitis have a little accent. Apparently, most of them pronounce their J's like Y's, so the word for new, Jadid, would be pronounced Yidid. Kuwait is the huh. only place where you can find robot camel races what? with remote controlled jockeys. It used to be children jockeys, but then there was like a child abuse law thing going on to cancel it, yada, yada, yada. Ah, boo, you people are so soft on your kids. Kuwaitis supposedly also- Man, is that pretty popular, those who live there? A robot racing with camels? Man, that is, that is cool, man. That's some cool stuff. Like, what usually wins, like the fastest camel or like the best robot? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Look at that thing, man. It looks like a little kid. On to cancel it, yada, yada, yada. Ah, boo, you people are so soft on your kids. Kuwaitis supposedly also wear their clothes a little differently. This is what I was told. Yo, Ken, I need you to model for me. For men, the thobes, or dishtashas, as it's referred to in Kuwait, have collars popped up, single button with a slim fit. And now this, the ghotra and agar. Now every area wears it differently and there's like an art to it, but I've been told the Kuwaiti style is balanced and even looking. Also, I think most of them would probably yeah. wear a white ghotra, not a plaid red one. Sorry, this was a gift given to me from Geography Sultan when I was in Saudi Arabia. Thanks, man. Dude, I love this. I love using your gifts in episodes. Thank you, Ken. Great. <laughs> <laughs> as for women, Kuwaiti women are disputably the least likely to wear hijabs in public in the GCC. Some just settle for hair caps. But you can tell if a woman is Kuwaiti or an expat based off of whether or not she wears big sunglasses with something maybe leathery and jewelry, makeup, and has a luxury brand purse. And the same kind of goes for all GCC women. Speaking of women, Kuwait is known for having the best models in the Gulf, as well as some of the most popular soap operas in the entire Arab world. Kuwait, like many other Arab states, has quite a few tribes and clans, but the two biggest ones are the Handar, city dwellers, and the rural Bedouins. But keep in mind, Bedouins are like everywhere in the Arab world. They're nomads, they're like that weird retired uncle who sold his house and drives around in an RV every day for the rest of his life. Anyway, <laughs> history time. Bani Utub settle in the area and start fishing. They become famous for their boats. Alexander the Great, Persians, Rashidun Caliphate, pretty much every other caliphate after that. Ottomans get a little touchy. So apparently Alexander the Great is everywhere. Like, I don't know how many countries he's been in, but Alexander the Great just seems to be everywhere. <laughs> The Great, Persians, Rashidun Caliphate, pretty much every other caliphate after that. Ottomans get a little touchy. East India Company gets in on it. They sign a treaty and become a British protectorate to fend off the Ottoman Empire. Great Depression hits hard. 1961 independence. Iran-Iraq war messed things up a bit. Kuwait does not forgive Iraq's debt. Tension begins. Iraq invades. Gulf War. Shortly after, they prosper once again. 2005, women got the right to vote and run in elections. HDI becomes one of the highest in the Arab world. And here we are today. And to close off this segment, some notable people from Kuwait might include people like Safa Al Hashim, Abdul Al Hussein, Abdul Reha, Nawal, Abdullah Ruashid, Dafi, Badr Al Mutawa, Fahyad Al Dehani, Humud Al Khiter, Marzuk Al Qanim, and Salah Al Ajeri. Kuwait is known for being the level headed loved one of the Gulf, which is why they cooperate so well in the area. Let's discuss more of that in our final new transition slide segment of. Okay, so once again, I'm pretty sure you're all aware of the fact that the GCC countries are close and will probably be mentioned in the segment as Kuwait's best friends. However, let's break down the GCC just a little bit so you have a little bit more insight. Saudi Arabia is like the big Mac Daddy Kingpin, head honcho. The UAE and Qatar are like fraternal twins that hate each other. Bahrain is Saudi Arabia's girlfriend that is always getting hit on by Iran. Oman is like the wise old uncle and Yemen is like his loud ex-wife. And then comes in Kuwait, the older, attractive, quieter sister of the Gulf who usually mediates between all this drama. Iraq is wow. like the ex 
ex ex boyfriend that she hooked up with and then broke up with multiple times. And while they're on break, she kind of had a fling with Cuthbert, but broke that off too. But when the Gulf states were all against him, she still kind of remembered the good times and was like, no comment. Outside of the region, though, Kuwait actually kind of favors the US and UK due to the historical ties of being wow. a protectorate under the UK. And also the US helping out with getting rid of her ex boyfriend's drunken invasion back in the Gulf War. When it comes to their best friends, though, most of the Kuwaitis I've talked to has said, in the end, Saudi Arabia. Even though some small issues have popped up here and there, Saudis and Kuwaitis are siblings that will always have a strong bond that goes back thousands of years back to the humble fishing village days when it all began. In conclusion, Kuwait was kind of like the first one to really kick off the whole managing an exponential prosperous Gulf nation thing into the 20th century. And through modernization, through the battles, through the drama, they still somehow come out with Gucci bags. Stay tuned for real this time. Uh, Kyrgyzstan is coming up next. You know, see what I did? <laughs> wow. Well, there you have it, guys. Kuwait, uh, definitely a rich country and very, uh, I don't know, just like the landscape, not the, the landscape, but like the buildings and I guess the, the architecture, that was just pretty cool. And it's kind of cool how, you know, they didn't make islands. They kind of just moved the land, their land and funneled water in. I don't know, that the kind of community it looks like it's making. That looks really cool. I'm very impressed by that. And yeah, definitely Rick. Kuwait, it just definitely seemed a lot different. But I guess they, I guess they all do. You know, they all, you know, they're all different. They all got their own style over there in the Middle East and everything. So I, I really like that. And it's definitely, you know, it doesn't pack them all together. You know, you think that they're maybe that they're all they're all kind of the same, but no, they're not. They all kind of got their own style and got got their own kind of thing going on. So really cool stuff. But anyways, guys, please hit that like and subscribe button. And I hope you guys continue the journey along with me. Always, uh, always a good time doing geography now. And I hope you guys follow the other war videos and stuff, uh, like the Hannibal uh, series I'm going right now. Always, always a lot of fun. But anyways, peace, and I'll catch you guys in future videos. I'm out.